thank you. So my uh, lecture will be uh, to share with you, particularly with young students, all the pleasure I had to to study this question about uh, number field, put anything in question concerning class group, for instance. And uh, when preparing this uh, lecture, I was thinking of when I was a student, I, was, I had two supervisors, Desouye and Ivaniet, and Ev Enrique Ivaniet told me, when you do not know what to do, do class number. <laughs> and now I would say, when you do not know what to do, do class group. And it's fantastic. Really, really, we know nothing. Everything is new. And the challenge is to put, I would say not strange mathematics, any mathematics, you see, and you have pleasure to, uh, and, you, uh, and you start from Gauss, of course, and so on, and very uh, exciting. For the moment, I'm much more excited by that than by prime number theory. So now, let's start. So, uh, so some basics, facts. So I start from a finite extension of Q. This is the ring of integer. And we consider ideal. And uh, so uh, I consider I to be the set of non-zero ideal of OK. And then you say that I and J are equivalent. if and only if, there exists alpha and uh, alpha prime belonging to OK, such that when you multiply, when you have this uh, equality. So it's uh, an equivalence relation. And what is very surprising is that you will consider the class group, and this is a theorem zero, which is that uh, this set with this uh, relation is a finite abelian group for the law induced by the multiplication, the composition, the, not the multiplication. of ideals. So, very classical. And what we get is CLD, what I call CLD. So you must not make confusion. It's what we called ordinary class group. Oh, yes, you are right, CLK. Okay. CLK. So this CLK, I, I, at least three questions I would like to, three types of mathematics which are interested by that. First of all, it's algebra, people from algebraic number theory. And now we can say people from analytic and also people from computational point of view. Okay, so. It's very, uh, very interesting, these three points of view. And I shall be more concerned not only with the case of quadratic field. What is this? So you, you impose k over q equals 2. And what is important is a, a discriminant, fundamental discriminant. So I shall write it. D, so how do you build a fundamental discriminant? You start from D star square three, and you impose it to be, so if it is square three, it is congruent to one, two, or three mod four, and it is positive or negative, and D 
is equal to fundamental, discrete, uh, fundamental you obtain 4d star, and this is, uh, you multiply, so d is equal to d star or 4 d star, and here when d is congruent to 1 mod 4, and this is d one to 2 or 3 mod 4. So it's, we, we, we know exactly, so what is uh, uh, lovely in the case of quadratic field, we can enumerate all the fields, quadratic field without problem. So that means you, you consider all the Q of square root of D, and there is a theorem which is uh, very easy. And like, uh, okay, curly D for this set of discriminants, this is as the theorem, the, it is that uh, uh, some zero of one is three over pi square x plus capital O of square root of x. This is not deep at all, and it is the same type of uh, death at uh, counting square free numbers less than x. And it's important, you can, this formula, so, so it's slight modification, we will use it, you can do it for d negative, you can impose uh, some congruences, d congruent to 1 mod 4, or d congruent to 4 mod 8, or d congruent to 0 mod 8, you have exactly the same type of formula. This is important because it's surprising for me. Uh, yes. So, what is what is very you, people must be must be conscious of that that this formula it has been ext it is very rarely extended. So, my question is, I count n k of x to be the cardinality. So, of up to I. Uh, so, you, you give a meaning to this formula such that the discriminant of k is less than capital X. So you are counting how many extensions of a degree k that you fix are their discriminant less than x. And the question, so for 2 it's known, and of course you can put a minus, and there are very few results. I, I check with, uh, um, with Belabas. So for k equals 3 is due to Davenport iron. So you see at the beginning of the uh, 70s, for k equals 4, it's uh, uh, more recent, is due to, to uh, several people, Olivier, Diaz, Diaz, Cohen, and uh, Bargava. And k equals 5, it's very... Uh, <coughs> a couple of uh, to Bargava, and that's all. So I insist about this problem. For, uh, people are able to count subfamilies, but this type of, as far as I know, this type of generality, we, did not, we do not know uh, how to count. So already there is a wall in some sense. So <coughs> uh, I continue uh, to when k is uh, Q of square root of D. So I recall some fundamental facts. So that the ring of integer you have an easy formula, which is Z with Z omega, with omega is uh, D plus square root of D divided by 2. Of course, you have the norm of an element, X plus Y. Okay, and so here we have to put x and y in Q, and uh, already becomes a, a difference. So, of course, we will speak about that. We have the set of units. It's completely different when D is positive and D uh, 
positive. Here, you know that it's a, there is a number W, which is equal to 2, 4, or 6, which counts the number of uh, units. For the e positive, you have something like plus or minus 1 multiplied by epsilon d uh, uh, n belonging to z. And this epsilon d is what we call the fundamental unit. which is linked with the Pell equation, which is a nightmare of uh, real quadratic field. So there is another uh, uh, class group which arrived. It is C, what I, so CLD will be the uh, ordinary class group of Q of square root of D. You have the narrow class group The narrow cross loop, which is <coughs> you you consider you have a new relation with an n, and you ask that alpha e is equal to alpha prime g with norm of alpha, norm of alpha prime positive. So this is a narrow class group, and <coughs> sometimes you are very puzzled to guess what people have in mind when they speak of uh, uh, the class group. So as you can guess, so uh, for when d, when d is negative, no problem. So, And what happens is that CL of d, uh, no, the, uh, pa, 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 pa. yes, CLD is a factor group of um, C of D with index one or two. Okay, so we are. And it's very difficult question to see when we have equality. So, um, yes, so uh, an easy proposition. So. is that these two class group coincide. So, so first possibility is that D is negative or D positive and the norm of epsilon D is equal to minus one. So, uh, so, uh, so we may ask about what is this? Is it frequent, this thing? First of all, to see if we make confusion. So my question is, when is solvable? So it's, uh, it's um, not, not so easy, I say it's tricky, uh, to say that N epsilon D, this is solvable, is equivalent to the Pell equation with parameter D star is solvable. So you have to take a Q because when you think of uh, uh, the, the integer, you have uh, you number two here, which so you may have Pell equation with plus or minus four. And now, uh, yes, so this implies all the prime factor P divided D star implies P equals two or P congruent to one mod four. And all the difficulty is that the, co the converse is false. It's not a local global, it's over Z. Uh, so uh, I write these things, let me, uh, so it's a sieve, uh, the cardinality of D between zero and X such that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, CLD, excuse me, CLD equals CD is very rare. It's a sieve. Uh, it's a sieve process. Usually, usually we have that the, the bigger group. 
the cardinality as least is equal to two times the cardinality of CL of D. Uh, so what do we know also? We know the class number. So, class number. So uh, when D is negative, no confusion. So, so you, usually you will find the notation H of D. And this is W, which is equal to 2, 4, 6, L, 1, D, um, square root of D divided by 2 pi. And for D positive, the formula is only for what we call H of D, which is the ordinary uh, class group. And here you have square root of D, L1. Okay. And here, log of epsilon of D, which is our nightmare. <laughs> and, uh, 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 yes, another, another uh, thing which is interesting that, uh, of course, you are speaking, uh, thinking of Gauss. Gauss was uh, thinking of uh, uh, quadratic uh, form, of course. C D can be interpreted or, uh, by a, a binary quadratic form over Z via the action of SL2 of Z. Okay, so, uh, so I would like to now to give some conjecture. So I would like to say yes, what is the, what is, why is it the nightmare? Because the nightmare is here. Because uh, so many formulas, you have always formula when H of D log epsilon D are married. This is the case. It's very, when we can't separate them, we are doing, I would not say silly thing, but we are not approaching the difficulty. The real difficulty of saying the same thing, H of D alone, or log of epsilon D alone. Now, I write some, uh, some conjecture to make the state of art, conjecture that I, which uh, we say, uh, I would like to, to, to stress. And they will concern mainly uh, the D, D positive. So I suppose D positive, and certainly the most famous one is due to Gauss. There exists so a question infinitely many p such that with so p congruent to one mod four such that h of p equals 1. So that means uh, there are infinitely many uh, uh, real quadratic fields uh, uh, which are principal. So of course, when I say that, I mean that p is positive. It's a usual prime. OK. The second one is, is strange. I remember it was quoted to me by Cohen. I discussed about that. He did, but, 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 but. What happens? We do not know this thing. So you can, I would like to write the name of Cohen. There exists infinitely such that h of p different from 1. We do not know that. This is very strange. At least, okay, that's, that's strange. We have this one. Always prime, you see, uh, we, we will meet someday the parity, uh, the parity question. A third one, so uh, of course, th this one is, was implicitly in the, certainly in the brain of a lot of people. So th I would like to, so just at the same moment, three people, a logical coincidence, I say, uh, Sarna, Cooley, and Cohen uh, wrote these uh, uh, two conjectures, so there exist. C1 strictly positive, such that when you sum the class number between 0 and x, it is asymptotic to some 
c naught x log square x. So you see, I, I was speaking to you of marriage, and now I speak of divorce here, okay? So uh, I make comments. So, uh, there exists C2. Uh, C1 and on the right. Ah, yes. Ah, that's, that's false. I stopped my talk. Okay. <laughs> so, that, C. so H of P, so I write uh, P congruent to 1 mod 4 is equivalent to, I think the constant would be 1 over 8, something like that. Uh, uh, C2 X. So, uh, and, and now the, the fifth one, so I, 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 I write it in a very, so here also the convergence of several uh, mathematicians, the three I quoted. So prove, I said, prove, prove that epsilon d, that most epsilon d uh, concentrate around exponential of square root of d. So I do not define what means concentrate. And you can guess what is a nightmare for computational point of view. You say you take a d reasonable, suppose with three digits, and what is epsilon d? We, we see the, the difficulty. So in fact, these conjectures are, uh, we can, I would not say they are equivalent, but they, they have the same feeling. As soon as you have that, you, you, you may think that in the class number formula, uh, where is it? Là uh, bas. Huh? Yes, the log epsilon d is almost square root of d. So uh, you see that there's a huge consolation. So in fact, they are almost equivalent to, not, not this one, so to, to say that the, the odd, uh, the number of uh, uh, classes which uh, odd uh, 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 exponent is very vaguely around log of d. Okay, and uh, I shall explain that after. So by prime number theorem, you guess that. Here there is something else. Appears the, uh, the two part, the even part, which is something that a two power omega of d, something like log of d. Okay. And so this one, so they are very challenging uh, question. And uh, uh, I would say some, uh, to what is known, I say, well, what I like about one and two, so nothing precise is known about one and two, but I have a strange result with uh, uh, Karim Belabas, which says that there exists, so it's a theorem, not a feeling, these are conjecture, there exists a positive proportion of p congruent to 1 mod 4, such that 3 does not divide h of p. It's a, so it's a very few result with h of p infinitely and a positive proportion of prime. And Enric will ask me, what about but about parity. I use C, but this sequence is very typical. I, we can escape uh, C. Uh, and you see, you may ask, uh, so with this thing, he said nothing here, nothing here, of course. And uh, uh, so it was proved around this year. And uh, people know this result. And it's always known, uh, a question to prove that if you take P congruent to 1 mod 4, such that 3 does not divide h of minus p. So it's, so we have the feeling that the real quadratic fields are much more complicated. And here an example of something we know about real, and it is not known about uh, 
uh, about complex quadratic field. So the idea is about uh, the number of, uh, there is a difference, we will see it with Davenport Heilbronn, about the number of elements uh, uh, in the three part. So now about this one. Yes, so I have a result about this one. It's a, uh, yes, so it's a, it, it, it is, to, I would say something, uh, it's due to myself, Jouve, and uh, after uh, um, Im improved by Ross, so which proves that for almost all d, epsilon d is greater than d power 3 minus delta. So it's, it's very, I would say, it's ridiculous, because when you compare this number with this one, it's like the, the height of my a tree in my garden is the distance to the sun. It's really, it's the same. <laughs> Nevertheless, if someone prove with uh, four, it will be it, it will be accepted. I'm sure, <laughs> because you see, the question is: to suppose we are seeking, suppose you improve that, which type of mathematics you improve? You improve. Ross used the determinant method. Okay, you see, it's a, anything can arrive in this question. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, yes, so now we little by little we, we are uh, converging with uh, uh, Cohen and Lenstra. So, what about d negative? d negative, I think, about this question, we, we know much more. And uh, our philosophy is that the odd part is uh, something like square root of d. So, it's completely different the class number. And uh, the, the this is for infinitely many d, right? This one, yeah. no, for, for almost all d, almost all d. for almost d. So, excuse me. In the sense of statistics. Yes. Is, is it is uh, it's just so that given by Pell's equation, x and y is small. Just write the equation <coughs> extra mm -hmm. and put x and y small. <coughs> That's the definition of heat, yes. right? Yes, but, but uh, the, the number three is not so easy to, up to you have to, to push to, to get to three. Your, your technique. Really? Yeah, it's just saying that this is, uh, it's not for all D. Yes, it's for almost all D, you see? Okay, for almost all D, okay? And uh, Enrique has to come to my mind the question, suppose that you know that there are infinitely many prime of the form n squared plus one, many questions here are, are solved. I don't know if you'll be talking later, because I'll be gone, about the uh, phase form and this connection. No. So maybe I would like to say something that the separation of H of D from the observable unit is very well done in the server phase form. Mm -hmm. right? And because you have asymptotic for the, I mean, log epsilon D is the length of your desk, so your desk is over there. And so you can average class number according to the length of your table. That means you separate this number from H to do this, etc. And other observation that is never recorded in literature is that if you look at the contribution in the place for the physical formatic of those observations, uh, which give you the main contribution, is for very special experiments. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, so, so the, the ones, the, yeah. So uh, to, to comment what you are saying, that I insist about this type of summation. It's what you have in mind. People, some people made result about the the log of. Uh, uh, you mentioned the separation. Of yes. Mm -hmm. Somehow the little bit another constitution exists there in the case of. So. Okay. So now we we go to. So always the quadratic field. Uh, what do we know about the P rank. So first of all, I must define what is so R an abelian group, and what is the P rank of this? It is a dimension of a FP of A divided by P A. So I use also sometimes the notation the cyclic group uh, of order p by nu. And uh, if you write, so it's maybe it's to, to have a feeling. 
So suppose that you write the, as the product of a, all the prime mu to one to infinity of a cyclic group and which each one appearing with the uh, frequency alpha p nu, then the p rank is the sum uh, of alpha p nu. So, uh, so what is well known is uh, the theorem of Gauss, always him, which says that the two rank of uh, C D is equal to the number of prime divisor of D minus one. So in some sense, we know uh, the any question about the two rank is uh, a question about omega of D. So it's rather simple. So it's, it's solved. It, and uh, uh, now, what about the literature? What about CL of D? What is the two rank of CL of D? So uh, here we have problem in the literature because there are uh, false proof, but there are correct one. So uh, I know that uh, CL of D is a factor group of CD of index one and two. So it may, it affects the two parts, but it may affect the two rank, or maybe a factor C8 may become a factor C4. Okay, so this is not sufficient to guess what is the two rank. So I recall that if you have uh, that, so we have always the two class group coincide. Okay, and uh, uh, this is a theorem now. I think due to, I think we found a proof, correct proof in Assel. And so suppose that D positive and epsilon D is equal to one. So the two uh, class group are not the same. Then the two statements are equivalent. The first one is C of D is equal to the cyclic group multiplied by CL of D. So that means that here uh, the two rank is lowered by one. And this is equivalent to there exists a P which divides D such that P is congruent to one mod four. Uh, yes. So in other words, uh, see if, okay, okay, this is equivalent. In other words, if X, Y minus D star is locally solvable but not uh, no, it's, no it's, it's, it's useless what I say okay. yes you know so we have to guess so we know how we behave the two rank of the ordinary class group now we arrive at cohen lenstra heuristic. So it's number two. So so it's, a, so it's published in lecture notes in mathematics in some journey arithmetic in this year. And a lot of people have thought about this heuristic. They have been generalized. Some of them have been proved in extended uh, situation. So, uh, so they were. So I, I shall not enter in the algebraic interpretation. Very superficial thing. So they use a computer first of first of all, and they 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 count the proportion of d negative up to the 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 capacity of the computer, the D negative, such that the three part 
of CD is uh, pa, 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 is C9. So is it true that the proportion is something like okay? And now uh, is so another group of cardinality nine, and here they find that it is only one point. Okay, so how can you explain that? So first of all, you, uh, but you must be careful in this uh, approach with new, uh, computational because the convergence is very, very slow. I, I will give you examples. So uh, the ratio of these two numbers is eight. Okay, and eight is correct. And this is nine. Yes, I like it. <laughs> and what is this? This is the cardinality of the automorphism of C3 uh, square divided by the cardinality of automorphism of C and the three is uh, the exponent is here. Okay, so uh, what I find to explain you what is behind. So they, they had the, uh, I would say, the, the brilliant intuition to affect to some group, some question where you want to meet some group, not the cardinality, because here the cardinality is the same cardinality, but this weight, the, card, the inverse of the cardinality. So you see here this. Uh, uh, this group has much, much more uh, automorphism than this one, so it appears much oftenly. Uh, no, less oftenly. Less. And uh, uh, so, some easy, so to, to, so some cardinality I want to, to, uh, um, but you must be very careful what you put. Ah, this cardinality is PR minus 1, PR minus PR minus 1. This is easy. And uh, it's natural. Uh, this formula is classical. It's form, it's, it will be natural. We will always find formula with the eta function. So this function appears in theory of partition. And so the first one is you take eta k of t is the product this this is a real function okay t power minus i and you suppose that uh, of course t is less than 1 and eta infini of t is equal to uh, the product i greater than 1, 1 minus t minus i. So this product is very uh, quickly convergent. We will benefit from that. And for instance, with this notation, this quantity is, as, is p power r square eta r of p. So you see, when I write cohen lenstra conjecture, we will not be surprised to see this, uh, this function uh, we meet frequently. So what about, so I write cohen lenstra heuristic, so in the way that I like. So, so and I... Uh, uh, yes, so, uh, yes, okay, no. So, uh, uh, so let P a prime at least three. So they were frightened by the prime P equals two because Gauss was waiting them here. And so, uh, first of all, so we, we suppose that D is negative. So I use their notation C phi, number phi, because there are other conjecture, the probability, so, so I, you can guess what I mean by probability that the uh, p rank of CD is equal to R. 
Yes, this probability is equal to p eta infinity of p product 1 minus p minus k minus 2 from k. Okay. Uh, C6, he says that the average for alpha integer greater or equal to 0, the average value, or if you want the expectation, I would expectation of this crazy product, not crazy, but I say uh, the P rank of CD minus, okay, so and you sum from mm -hmm. uh, this expectation is equal to 1. Okay, so when you see that, you can remember, oh yes, that reminds me of some uh, counting automorphism. Okay, this, this is the origin of that. And for real quadratic field, for, so they call them uh, C9, C10, so here the probability will be slightly modified. It will be P minus R, R plus 1. Uh, so I don't, it's almost useless that I write it. Here the probability, no, is this one is, the last one is P minus alpha. So these are the heuristic of cohen lenstra in the original paper. Uh, So now we must make some comments, what is known, what is not known. So it's a, So what they have to support that their conjecture at that time, only computational data. And this conjecture were proved only in one case. So we are going to, uh, they were proved only in one case. That means we will meet him several times in Davenport Iron, which gives, so it was, I told it already, it's the same thing as counting cubic fields, what I told you. They only give uh, this expression here, so they were, they were only proving us. Like, uh, I don't know, 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 I think, is it alpha equals one or alpha equals two? Uh, zero, alpha equals, uh, yes, alpha equals one. Yes, okay, it was only proof for that, only. And this, uh, it has not much change, I would say. But we have extension which confirm uh, the, the intuition of Cohen and Lenstra. So I would like to make some comments. The, the first one is, if you believe it, okay, so you see this, uh, you must have in mind that this coefficient goes to zero very quickly. Very, very quickly. So for instance, I doubt that uh, someone, a computer, uh, is it known, a D with the three rank of CD is equal to 10, for instance. That means you have the first coefficient, the second one is bounded, the first coefficient P power, that means three power Minus and uh, minus hundred is very very small. So I think is it true for the specialists of computational? I think it is not known. And it's not surprising. It's very difficult. And uh, first of all, we uh, with my colleague 
cleaners. I would like you maybe uh, I would not not criticize, of course, but uh, command C C six and C ten. So uh, we make uh, some observation, and uh, we, con we I call N K P is a cardinality of the total number of uh, I don't know what is English word linear vector spaces vector subspaces of any dimension of uh, HP power K yes okay of any dimension so it's a, the computation is almost done so you have a uh, n k p is equal to the sum from l equals to zero to k, and you have a, a ratio p k minus one, p k minus p minus l minus one divided by p l minus p l minus one. So. Uh, the eta function is, is here, the eta k function. So uh, C6, so it's only uh, playing with, I would say, a formula. So C6 is equivalent to, uh, for all alpha, for all alpha integer, the average values, that means yeah, what I wrote, the expectation of p power alpha um, cd, uh, is equal to this number of vector subspaces. You see, so we have the moment for someone from analytic number theory prefer computing a moment than this uh, uh, um, this expression, which has which is full of algebraic meaning in terms of automorphism. And now C10 is equivalent for all alpha integer, so it is a slightly modified n alpha plus one p minus n alpha over p over p power alpha. And uh, in some le lecture, I will uh, explain in our proof about the four rank with cleaners, we see this vector spaces. We do not see the automorphism, but we see this linear vector spaces. Okay, so uh, now uh, we made some uh, uh, remark with Cleaners, I, because, uh, and I think that uh, Cohen and Lestra are not very precise. Maybe it was um, clear in their, I don't know. So it's not, a, I would say, a, a proposition. Proposition is that C6 implies C5 and C10 imply C9. It means it's, it is so. And I have this version of C6. So as soon as you are able to compute all the moment, you know the probability. Here also. It's not surprising, but it's not evident, I would say. It's not evident. And the converse, we cannot prove, of course. We uh, 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 do not know. Uh, what is the rate of convergence of this probability? From probability, if you write that, you cannot deduce the average, the, the expectation. So nevertheless, I like this proof. And because uh, I, I must admit that sometime we meet uh, the paper of Is Brown concerning uh, the two Selmer group. We have the same type of solution. And uh, we meet an infinite linear system. I write, so I write what is it? So I take only d negative. Oh, and uh, so uh, when using uh, Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem and so on and so on, so I call dr the probability, the proportion that uh, uh, the uh, P rank of CD is equal to R. 
So we use, uh, so I can't, it's, it's not evident, but it is not deep. So you, you meet this infinite uh, linear system, which is d0 plus d1 plus d2 is equal to uh, is equal to n 0p, which is 1, of course. So the sum of probability is equal to 1. So, and after it's more d0 plus p d1 plus p d2 plus uh, p squared d2 plus p q and so on. And uh, d0 uh, plus plus uh, p4. So it's like, I would say, uh, an infinite van der Monde determinant. Uh, is Brown considers that like a van der Monde with screeners, we, we find an, another uh, technique. So I would give some, uh, to, to prove that it has, a, to check that it has a, the solution. And in fact, that the solution is unique. So, uh, so first of all, check that dr is equal to uh, the probability I wrote, which is here. Is a solution. So I was very happy. We had to uh, uh, open, first of all, RD and write book in the partition function. And so we, we find this, of course, it's classical. Now for, so you know, this is, if this is a partition and not the n primes, you know that this is 1 over And it is exactly the function eta infini, 1 over x. Okay. And now we, there is a classical extension, always in uh, RD and right, which is a, a lemma. So uh, certainly, he says, they say it was known to Euler. So it, you know, it was known. So this is equal to 1 plus uh, x divided by 1 minus x squared plus uh, x4 such a formula and in fact we, we required another one which is uh, we found it in uh, Yes, excuse me. We can write this formula as eta infini of 1 over x is equal to the sum x k square divided by eta. So we are in the, I would say, in the kingdom of partition function. So to check this is not sufficient, this function, we have to generalize this equality, so we have to generalize it, and we, it was proved already, and it's, the generalization is this one. <coughs> so you take, so suppose d positive integer, so we, 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 will, we will slightly, here you have the, the sequence of square here, we will slightly modify This, uh, this will not be r square, but r, r minus t, but it gives something different, which is that uh, always uh, the partition function, p of n x n, so it's the sum from r equals t to infinity, x r, r minus t, and then I write it because, and so you finish 1 minus x by x r moins t plus 1. So, 
So it is not in RD Little Wood, uh, not in RD and Write. So this formula, you can use it to check that it satisfies this infinite uh, linear equation uh, system. And I like the proof of that because you are, you are exhausted. So we make drawing, okay, to explain it with uh, what we call Durfee rectangle. So we found it in a, a book of uh, Conte. So I take 19. 29, and I decompose it like 8 plus 7 plus 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And I make the following drawing corresponding to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Après, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Après, je... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Donc, ce qui est... Donc, c'est la description usuelle d'une partition. Donc, nous partition. So we go, we go maybe in the 19th century. So, nothing deep. So what is a Durfee rectangle with, uh, with defect t equals 1? So you take the largest uh, rectangle you can, you can put inside this drawing with uh, uh, size, size, r, r minus 1. So you, and the drawing is the uh, following, it's 4, 3. You see, the largest rectangle is here. 4, 3, okay, you cannot, you see, the, uh, there is one difference between the <coughs> la longer and larger, I don't know the English word. So when you are right, what happens is that you are going to play to each partition of that type. You will, you will associate, first of all, a Durfee rectangle and partition. Here, what happens? Here you have 3, okay, so you have a, a certain number of uh, Here there are r, r minus t points, and then uh, suppose that l, suppose that here you have l integer, l points, and here m points. What is here? You, you, you see the drawing here. You have a partition of this number m with a summand less than this number less than three, you see? So you, you, you analyze this drawing like that. You see, you have the partition of the number L with someone less than, uh, here it is four, here it is less than three, even if it is two. And so you have a bijection, and this gives this very uh, say, uh, integrate formula, which is the key of the fact that the dr uh, R solution, the DR I propose. And now about the unicity. So the unicity for me is, is, a, is, is strange because you, you are. Uh, so I claim that this, this system I call S1. So it's the first part, the second one, S1. S, S minus has at most one solution in positive di. And the key, the, what is important, that n uh, kp is, is something like, is less, less, capital O of p k square over two. P k square over two, something like that. Yes, it's only. And what happened is that the uh, second, what we call uh, second member, the second part of here, which is n uh, one p and so on, goes to infinity, but not too quickly. And here we will use. So it's, I shall not explain Jensen formula to create. We we built a. Uh, 
complex variable function, and there are systems of that type which has which have not a unique solution. For instance, so suppose here I replace uh, uh, suppose here I replace here by some C k, so it will be C zero, C one. So it may have more than one solution. May have more than a unique positive solution. So I give you. So I shall take C k equal the sine hyperbolic sine of pi uh, p power k. And uh, and of course you will check. Uh, uh, Excuse me. So you will find. Uh, uh, so to, to find solution, you use a, a Taylor expansion. Uh, you use uh, Taylor expansion of the function of sine hyperbolic sine of p a k at the uh, uh, x k. And you will find another uh, solution if you consider the Taylor expansion of sine hyperbolic sine of pi x k plus a usual the usual sine function. Use the Taylor expansion of these both uh, uh, functions. You will see that the, the c k. Uh, what I call the CK, yes, it has this value. And the Taylor coefficients are not the same and positive. And you see, this function goes to infinity. It has absolutely not the same sign. It's something that <coughs> exponential p, p power k. So it's go to infinity much, much uh, quicker. So, it's, uh, so it was a pleasure with Kuhners to make a Jensen formula. OK? But uh, is Brown had another technique. So thank you. Allez, c'est fini. Are there uh, questions or comments? If you know, uh, if you know the probability of the C5 projector, you, can, you can't get C6? No, you, you do not know the, the rate of convergence of the probability. No, oh, this is... It's a theory of moment, in some sense. And we are on the edge. You see, it's, it, does the theory of moment imply that we know the probability? It's, it's work here. No. If I have a rate of convergence, if I say more, I do not say probability, but the number is equal to pum 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 plus a very good error term. Yes, I can do. But you see what I mean?